May the Lord bless and keep everybody here. May He set His angels around you. May you walk in faith. And in this dark time we live in, know that God is with you. And if God is with you, no one can be against you. Yes. And we just open this today. And Holy Spirit, you're so welcome in this place. Thank you for being here all the time. Thank you for Pastor Loki teaching us through the Holy Spirit all the time, all these wonderful things which we didn't know. So Lord, I just praise you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning. Right, so, the past few Sundays I've been asking you to go and hug someone you don't like. And, and what I saw was everybody hugging each other. And I thinking, oh thank you, my God, we've got problems. No one likes each other in this house, so this morning I'm going to ask you to go and hug someone you do like. <laughs> so let's just, while we just start off, just go hug a visit and go hug someone. Just show it's absolute love. Hold on, please.
Every day. 
Moses said, get them all to me. Here we go. I want to ask a question. Who would love to have the God kind of authority and the God kind of faith? Is that good? Okay, now, let me ask another question. How many of you people prayed for it already? One. Two. You want the God kind of faith and you need to pray for it? Yeah. Oh, God. Let me just get out of here. Means 
God alone has the right to come on things. God alone has the right to come on things, to call things. God alone. That must be my attitude. That must be my thinking. That must be my confession. God alone has full control. I'm not equal with God. I have no control. Watch it now. As much as I submit to His authority and control. This is amazing. I want to go to the next one. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. Now listen to this. We know that God is in full control over everything. Say full control. So God is about to transfer this. Full control. Watch this. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The moment Christ was raised from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Watch now. Far above all principality and all power and all might. Whoa. God has just now been in full control of all the earth. And he raised his son from the dead and transferred all the power that God has. What? And power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in the age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is the body, the fullness Amen. of him who falls and falls. All in all. Amen. So God, who has all power, all the might, transferred it all, and he says to his son, Unto your shoulders I give the counsel of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. So when Jesus was raised up from the grave, God said, You done it. You've been obedient unto me until death. You deserve the highest position. Amen. Ephesians 2 says he was sitting in high places. Luke 4 verse 6. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give to you and them and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whoever I will. This is when Jesus was standing in the wilderness, and the devil was right, because God originally gave this to Adam. And Adam gave this authority that God gave to Adam over to the devil. So Jesus had to come as a human, as a spiritual, as the word of God, becoming flesh to walk on this earth in your place like a man, to take the authority back. A divine being gave the authority away in the garden, and a divine being must take it back. So now Jesus, the devil is tempting the devil, is tempting Jesus. If Jesus would have done it and would have submitted just to get the power, then you and I would have been bound up forever and ever and ever. We would never have grace, we have never had mercy, we would never have been delivered from the power of darkness. The devil would have been in charge of earth forever and Amen. ever and ever. But Jesus came and lived in obedience until death, so that the Father came and raised him from the dead, give him a rightful place in the heavens, sitting on the right hand side of God the Father. Now watch now. Where do you sit? How do you get there? So if Christ is on the right hand side of the Father, so if Christ has got all authority, and all power, and the moment that I became a born again child of God, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, immediately I had a seat in heaven with God. Um, glory. Um, so if Christ is in heaven and I am in Christ, where am I sitting? Yeah, On the right hand side of the Father. And what is in my hand? <laughs> a scepter to reign and to rule with Christ, in Christ, while I am.
tell you why. You know why our country is in a mess? Because we shut up. The power is not advanced people on The power is in your tongue. You stand for us to stand up and speak these things into existence. So we know who enjoys this. Amen. God is coming back to find faith. Not find begging people. God's coming back for a house that knows where he sits. On the right hand side of the Father. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority, say all authority. All authority. Has been given unto me. In heaven and on earth. What's the next says? He says, go. He says, listen, I've got the authority. It's been on me. Every believer who believes in me, who I have redeemed with my own blood, washed you, purified you, who I have sealed in with my glory and spirit, I share my authority and my power and my might with you. Come sit with me on the right hand side in God's presence. I wish I had. Oh, I, I feel it. No, you can't feel it. Faith is not feeling. Faith is not a goosebump. Faith is not a ship up down your spine. God is in a presence. Faith is here even when you are miserable. Faith is here when you're not even feeling good. Faith is here when you don't even feel loved or, or cared for or wanted. God is not looking at that. God is saying, do you believe that I have all authority and all power? Yes, I believe. Do you believe I transferred this power to my son? Yes, I believe. Now, if you are in my son, do you believe you have me in you? The hope of glory, the power, and the might of heaven is right in this house. Every man, every woman, in this building, you've got the wrong kind of faith. You've got the God kind of All in your mouth. How do you know that? Let me show you. The cell power when you start coming and thinking about how God did it. I want you to go quickly to the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3. Guys, the time has come for the church to rise up, stand up, and use your tongue. Rise up, stand up, use your tongue. Maybe your mind is not here this morning, but I want to tell you, the devil is about taking your mind away from the most important message of your life. You can speak yourself by the power of God in the name of Jesus out of your situation. Amen. You can speak yourself out of your condition of sickness and disease. You can get up in the morning or you can say, I feel so pop. Or you can say, regardless of how I feel, my hope and my strength is in the law. You know, we, we, we start a sermon this morning, a prayer, and I, I always do it on a bus in Israel. When I get up in the morning and I in that bus, the first thing I say, I take the mic and I say, good morning, you guys. I can only hear what I want to do it. I want to demonstrate the boss me. <laughs> I get up in the morning and I take the bus. I turn around and I face the bus like I'm facing you. And I will tell you this bus. Watch this now. And I want you to follow me. Your confession becomes your position. Let me do it again. That's not the reason. Your confession <laughs> becomes, becomes your position. possession. Whatever you confess, that's exactly what's in your heart. Watch this now. So okay, guys, this is a bus. We have a long day ahead of us. We're going to see a lot of things. We're going to go through a lot of things. We're going to go through a lot of emotions. You're going to see a lot of things. You're going to learn a lot of things. I want you to put your Bible away what you heard in South Africa. we on God's level, God's ground. Things are going to change. Then I say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in my make of confession regardless of how I feel. I make a confession regardless of how my conditions are. I, I make a confession in spite of. I choose to make that confession. And you and I, we in this house, when we start looking at things, it says, I will not look at the things in the physical. I'm not bound by the physical. I'm a believer in the supernatural. I'm going to use my mouth and I'm going to speak my things into existence. I'm going to speak to my 
Jesus. I'm going to speak to my God and I'm going to use his name and every knee shall bow, not by me, but by the power of that name because I believe. I believe. Nothing can resist that name. I believe in the power of the blood and it's nothing more powerful than the blood of the Lamb because it must be clean. It can't be clean. It redeemed me. I didn't mean to do that. I mean to do it. But I can't help but when the Holy Ghost comes upon me. It's the Holy Ghost and power that's keeping me alive because my confession is I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed by the power of the blood. I am washed. Sorry. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say through grace, how do I get this? How do I get this authority? How do I get this faith? Not by my good works. Not how nice I smile and how much people love me. Maybe not by the size of my wallet. There's one place that you cannot buy. Grace. Amen. It comes by grace. Amen. Watch this. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not think of yourself more highly than ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt, God has what? God has dealt with what? Each one a measure of what? Listen, the moment that you become a God, listen, this is not the world, by the way. This is not the men of the world. It's the people of the body of Christ. There is not one in this house that God hasn't dealt with. His authority and His faith. Everyone in this house, you have it. Stop praying for it. Stop thanking God for it in advance. I've got it. Does it feel like it? No. <laughs> Does it look like it? No. But by faith, I believe what God said. God said you got it. That said you said. God said it's in you. That said it. God said move by faith. And in faith, why? Believe in me. But also believe in God. So the moment I put my mind on who God is, the one and only true God, and he transferred his authority unto the Son, and the Son gave it to us. Amen. So where is this thing? Right in this house right now. Next scripture, Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9. For by grace you have given, you, you've been saved through faith that not of yourself it is a gift. Your authority is a gift. Your faith is a gift. You do not deserve it, but by the grace, the unmerited favor of God, He gave it to everyone who knelt down at the cross, who confessed that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Most High God. What's Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10? What's this quickly? Does anybody get this? Amen. <laughs> I'm so excited. Glory to God. That's it. But what does it say? The word is what? Near in your mouth and in your heart. The word is where? In your heart. Let me explain to you something what God is saying. He says, listen, to a Muslim Kilian. The Holy Ghost cannot move unless you repeat the scriptures. Not your idea. Not your thinking. But if the word is in my heart, I take that same word and put the sound of that word on my mouth. And the moment I put sound on my mouth, which is according to God's word, I get the reaction. What it is. What's this name? I'm going to jump again. Um, verse, uh, Romans chapter 10, verse uh, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. I have somebody preached to 
you the gospel. Anybody here that got somebody that testified about Christ? How did you got saved? Jy is gered geword door iemand wat vir jou die begin nie verkondig het. You got saved because somebody told you what Jesus has done on Calvary's cross. And eventually the Holy Spirit came and convicted you of your wrong. The moment you become conscious of your wrong, what do you do? Oh Lord, forgive me. And the moment I, I say forgiveness, it means the word that I heard convinced me that I'm on my way to hell. So my confession on who Jesus is, what He's done for me by faith that God sent Him, by faith that He was the Son, and by faith that He died on the cross of Calvary for a sinner like me, I invite Him into my life. The moment I invite Him into the Holy Ghost and take that seed and plant that seed on the inside of me, and when I like it now, I am being sown into the living Word of God. And the Holy Spirit will make sure that that seed will come up. Mm-hmm. I wasn't always a pastor. I was being stirred for lightning. Maybe he said that he said, I think he has been over his own. Maybe he has been as not as he was. Every one of us fails. Every one of us needed Jesus. And every one of us had to make a confession in Jesus' name. If without your confession, what Jesus is, it's only knowledge. It's not faith. Many people are studying scriptures and, and Bible readings, and, but if it's only here, that's never a good to have. You must. I need Jesus here. I need to be convinced my life is not in line. I need to be convinced if I have to close my eyes tonight or right at this very moment, and in the condition I am. I will not see the light on the other side. Uh, my left will not go up. My left will go down. And down there is no escape. So that when I confess Jesus, by grace God saved me. By grace He gives me a gift, the gift of life. I'm going to go quickly to another scripture. Mark 11, 12 to 14. Now we can into this. Now listen, listen how Jesus operated. Maybe you have something in your life. Maybe you have a sickness or a disease. Maybe you have a, a want or a need. Maybe you have a financial need. It doesn't matter what it is. Maybe you're, you, you, you are not at the place right now where you want to be. Now, I'm going to tell you something now. I need everyone to be honest, not with me, but with yourself. I don't want to see your hands. <coughs> but you can tell yourself, I am not at the place where I'm supposed to be. Because I am such a failure. You're not a failure here. You failed before you met Jesus. Mm-hmm. After that, Jesus is with you, so it means you are not a failure. Because God doesn't create failures. He takes you out of failure and puts you on the road of success. If someone doesn't like you, it's fine. I always say to people, ah, I like you, I like you, it's fine. I don't mind. You must be a good friend. I don't love you, that's fine. You're missing the great love of Christ in me, the hope of glory. So I don't care, it's fine. <coughs> but if, <coughs> but if you accept Jesus Christ, you know, I, I, I once prayed for a lady, she was in a room, a very, very sinful lady. And uh, they asked me to pray for her. As I was praying for her, she manifested so badly that she was on the ground. She wasn't born again. She wasn't saved at all. So these things can happen when you're not born again. You're not blood washed, but not after you are born again. God will not throw you down. Devils will not manifest because Christ has got you, not devils. Mm-hmm. But before, and anyway, she was on the ground and I came to her, I said, what are you going to do? And she's looking at me, her eyes as big as saucers. And she's got a funny grin in the face, like a very evil grin. I didn't let her put me off. I just whisper, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, stand up. It's like a sweet, it's like a bulb went on. She said, Why me this way? From something ugly she saw to something beautiful. So when Christ comes into your life, he changes darkness to light. 
It takes you out of darkness and brings you into the kingdom of the dear son. You were sitting no longer. There was a time when you sat down in the, in the bars and in the counters and enjoyed life. But the moment you became a born again child, you switched places. You can stand in a bar and fold your arms and look. Oh, thank you, God. I once was there. Please, say to you. You don't want to do those things anymore because there's a light on the inside. You're different. You walk different. You talk different. You love different. You give different. You, you, you're just different. And guess what? When you're different, everybody wants to be around you. Because there's a light around you that draws people to Christ in you, not to you. Now the next day when they had come down, we know the story about Bethany, Bethany means house of agony. Now the next day when they had come out of agony, Bethany, he was hungry. Who was hungry? Jesus. Now I need you to see this. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In the response, Jesus said to eat. What did he do? Did he think? Did he hum? Did he go? No. He used his mouth. What? He went to see if perhaps he could find something on a fig tree. He found nothing but leaves, for it was there is no other religion in the world that can match God. Amen. No matter how many days you live in the goodness, no matter how big your fat boo-boo sits over there, no matter how many times you have your Taliban on your cock and your Haleli battery stone, it's not going to help. You're going to turn away from the gods of this world and put your focus on the God of creation. Watch this. For it was not the season of this. In response, Jesus said, spoke, let no one eat from you. Watch this. And who? Who heard? Do you know what Jesus has done over there? Can you imagine everybody walking with Jesus? And he looks at his fig tree and sound came out of his mouth. And he says, from you, no one will ever eat from you again. His disciples heard. Can you imagine if they heard it? How alert they was to see what happened to them? Because you see, something happened. Jesus has put himself on the spot. He put his father on the spot. He put himself on the spot. And he said, no one will eat from you again. Sound came out of his mouth. I'm on the Sea of Galilee. And in the back I saw this lady over there. And there's some people who with me on that trip that knew I didn't know this lady from a mile or so. I looked at her and I said, excuse me lady, in the back over there, you had three miscarriages just come in. I didn't know her from a bar or so. She came to the front crying and weeping because nobody knew. So I said to her lady, put your hand in the moon. And I said, death, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I said, go lady, you're healed. <coughs> a month after she arrived back in South Africa, she discovered she was pregnant for the first time. After four some years of not having even a period, the child is now. Now she just seven. Today she's turned seven. But it's the sound coming out of your mouth, putting God on the spot. Maybe you in this house. Maybe you need to speak out. Maybe you've been praying and asking God to come and Lord help me, help me. And God says, but I've given it as all in your mouth. Jesus came to demonstrate when he spoke to the fig tree. It's all in the mouth. Can you imagine a couple of days later when they came past that same Do you know what they used to do? I think they ran to see what happened to the tree. Because they remember Jesus spoke. Listen to them. Lord, Lord, did you see? Did you see the tree die? He says, that's nothing. Believe in God the Father and believe also in me. For greater things will you do. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Amen. Is, there a, is there somebody in your family that doesn't serve God? Is 
that a child is rebellious? Is there somebody that's said to God, I want to tell you something. Go up to him and says, listen, go speak to him. I want to tell you today, in the mighty name of Jesus, you're about to have an account of God. lives in natural faith. They didn't have faith to believe that Christ came. That's why they're all going to go through hell. That's why they can have a tribulation because God needs to purify them so that they can come and manifest. But they will only have to see to believe. Blessed is he who believes yet they haven't seen. So, in the physical, I need to feel it, I need to see it, and I need to hear it. If I have, I've got a set of keys in my hand. Let's just call it, I don't know which Toyota this is, but I'm going to give it away now. <laughs> I have a Toyota key in my hand. If I say to Mika, <laughs> this key is yours, the car is yours, the woman will, buy me a Zayona, will you take it? <coughs> Watch it now, simply. She takes it because she believes I give it to her. So now she's got the key in her possession, is that correct? Now, normally, normally that's the way that we operate. We give her, the, and I say to her, here is a car, it's yours. Now she knows she's going to do something, she's going to come fetch my key from me. But that's the moment the key is hers, or the car is hers, the moment I say it. I've got a car for you, she hasn't even received the key. So the moment God said, by his stripes, I've been healed. It means, regardless of how I feel, regardless of how my body manifests, regardless of the healings, it might be intensified. And the doctors may say that, like me, if you hurt me. But that is what the doctor says. He puts a negative way, a hearing device in my ear, so that I must believe in him. But what does the word of God say? I say, I believe my God. It's all possible. Not because the doctor says it, but my God says I'm healed. Regardless of my feeling, regardless of my body, response. God said it. So when I take the word of God, and I put it on my mouth, and I say what God says, okay. What is it that you need God to do for you? Lord, my circumstances don't look so good. Scripture, my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory. Oh Lord God, I'm not going to worry about an account. It's not my account because I've given account of it. How can it get paid? Help, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to do what you 
power and authority. You know, I was a, I was a police officer. But before I got to have the things on my shoulders, I started, as we call it, the Afrikaans, a roof. You got to say a roof. I did with the performance. That's as close as you came. You were a nothing. And everybody shouted you around. You got all the evidence as a, a learned student. Even the youngest constable used to shout you around. And you would be glad to obey. <laughs> of course, then you're making your training. And of course, then you became a constable. Now you shout your work around. <laughs> and of course, then a sergeant is in charge. Or oh, he's got the stripes. He's very close to some kind of a god. Because when he sees you just on pension, I sign out of a fish because you know what he's capable of. You acknowledge his authority because you see it on his own. And I can admit, I can admit the first time I, I put my stripes on, oh man, there wasn't a mirror in town that didn't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I prayed so much. I felt so, man, I felt it. Oh, God. And I lived in it so the people under me would recognize I'm assaulting on the section. And after that, I got a couple of wheels out here. Well, when I get this, I give them here. Now, sergeants are under me. And they knew it. Because I never became a chung on their level. I stay in my rank. I keep my status quo of my position. <coughs> and of course, it went to my shoulders. Now I'm in charge of, 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 of CIDs, 30, 40 men under me. And when you're in that position, you have to live up to that standard of that rank. Otherwise, you lose your position. Yeah. So you see, the only one who can promote you to a higher level this morning is the one who you submit to. The more I submit to the rank above me, the more I got favor. Amen. And today, here's the body of believers. The devil says, as long as I can't submit, I don't know who God is, and I'm acting upon it, I've got them in the palm of my hand. But when this church of believers this morning turned around and says, My God, forgive me. I have divided my authority by believing sometime in the world and, and sometime in you. Depends on what my mood is like. Mm -hmm. But Father, today, I want to stand up with you. I want to turn my life around. I choose free will in me this morning to submit to the only authority, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I submit. Watch now, watch now. And the Holy Ghost is saying, because you submit to the Father, and to the Son, you're a hand to your assistance. I will guide you, I will direct you, I will show you, I will teach you, I will make you what God intends you to be. Give me the right. Amen. Who are talking to you in this house? Amen. Oh, this is just amazing to me. When I sit down, I want to go to another scripture. There's quite a few. Remember, there was a centurion. The centurion saw Jesus. And he ran up to Jesus. He said to him, This is a Roman soldier who was appointed by Rome. Caesar made him an officer of the court. And what it, he was so submissive to Caesar. The Roman soldiers of old were so submissive to Caesar because if they stepped out of line, they would have been punished for some of them to death. So they know what it is to submit to authority by force. You and I today are not subjected to the authority of God by force, but by choice. Choice. Can you remember the time when Jesus was crucified? And they had the Roman soldiers surrounding the grave, sealing it in. Do you know that the Roman soldiers was told in that time, 
If there comes any incident, if there's an escape, you will be crucified. A Roman soldier be crucified by the Romans because they allow Jesus to escape. That's why the Pharisees had to come to him and said, listen, we'll take the bomb. We will say, not you, we will say that a force came to steal the body of Christ that he gave. Let's have a look. If one of those seals were broken and the Roman soldiers could not say how Christ was, the body was raised up or stolen, they would have all been crucified and killed. That's how, how powerful Rome was in the time. But here we come. God is saying to all of us in this house, I'm not going to force you to submit to me. I'm going to give you a choice. You can answer God by grace and mercy. I've tried to look and live by touch and believe and feel and see. But in any way, I want to do it. Submit to you by your grace. Be I want my life changed. I want my mouth to speak with it. Yes, my body. The devil is using my body against me. Maybe you are near his house and you have pain somewhere and your mind is in turmoil and fear. Your finances is not in a good place. Your business is not in a good place. Your family is not in a good place. What oh God is saying, submit to me. Allow my authority to move in you and for you. James is speaking. Then Centurion said to Jesus, Sir, my servant is sick at home. And Jesus said, Show me. And he said, No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. Yes, yes. You don't have to do that. I am also a man of authority. I say to this one, go there. And I say to that one. They do. I remember, like I said, I was a policeman. And you know what? We had a girl soldier, a Simon, a little Akari's woman. <laughs> but when that little Aki had his sleeves rolled up, he knew who he was. And he had stuck his arm for me. I knew she was a cop for me. And they bluff. I told you it's just a boom, boom, boom of magnifier. And you know what was amazing? He was the drill sergeant on the parade ground. And when a colonel, a full colonel, just walked on his parade ground, he halted us up, stopped us right over there, turned around and said, Sir, off my parade ground now! He's only a one, but the same. But this guy did all the girls. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, so I just turned around and we thought, what? He said, this is my place. This is my ground. This is where I stand. I will not allow anything to come into my house, onto my ground, onto my property, onto my family, onto my body. God gave me control over this body in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not allow every evil power of personality to come into my body and disrupt my life. And he had his gun on his side. 
And it stood right in front of the car like a... And it, it stood out for me. And I tried to tell him, hey, but he came on, me. What's on that car? He says, me. He came up on my boss. He went up to those guys and said, excuse me, sir. And I heard him. He said, excuse me, sir. No, he fell from... I just said, no, he said, please get out of the car. No, he says, I'm telling you one more. Get out of your car. And this guy's got me. He says, you and me. This is not a problem. Get out of the car. He had authority. He knew who he was. He had a blue uniform on. He had people behind him. He knew his backup. He was standing there of the Lord. I am a soldier of the cross. I'm dressed up like a soldier of the cross. I have authority. I have power. I have my, I have a sword. I have a shield. I have a crown. I have a plate of oh, I want shoes. I and I'm going to stand up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, you will not cross over that barrier. I have backup. I've got God behind me. I've got God in me. I've got God out. The enemy is coming in and he's stealing from you, your loved ones. <coughs> he's stealing from you and robbing you from your peace. He comes and he goes as he pleases. Not from this hour on no more. I was speaking to somebody in this house. Tell me. Maybe you feel that God, God says, I want to give you the God kind of faith. Become conscious that you've got heaven backing you up. Jesus. Become conscious you've got God the Creator behind you. You've got God the Son, the Word behind you. You've got God the Holy Ghost behind you. You've got two thirds of heaven's angels behind you. You've got the authority and the power and the light. It's in your mouth. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is waiting for the sound of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Who am I talking to? Okay. I'm going to close down. I want to tell you something. I want to speak the name of Jesus over every family. I want to shout out of the hilltops. Because you see, you know, when, you, when you're in Israel and you wake up in the morning, all you hear is, I am Yamai. Very often, you know. You can't help it, but every single day. Hour after hour. And he doesn't do it now. <laughs> but you know what? What got to me? 24 hours is the sound in your ear. Whether he's another God or from another kind of religion, doesn't matter. But he has the guts. To go five hours, five days a day, five times a day, and go bow on something as dead. Yeah. They leave and they shut down their businesses. There's an hour of prayer. We were in the old city once, I think you guys were there. In the old city once, we, we were on the wrong time. In the old city. God help us. We have to stand on the side and see this masses coming past. They go in to pray. They leave their businesses doors open. They just put the broom across them. They don't even shut it like we do. We know we, we don't shut it. When we come back, they won't be in the <laughs> But these guys, just cut the broom, do it like that, come for prayer. Yeah. And why are they thousands? You know what? It's so peaceful after an hour, there was nothing in the streets. <laughs> but you couldn't shut, there was no shelter. You just had to look, we can't sleep because we are thieves. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you, they are prepared to go to the help for the God they serve. They prepare five times a day. And I always say, we call the pattern in for the local. Some of them have got buttons in. It's like a cold over us. Because they have to bump their heads all the time against the wall. For some reason, I don't know why they bump their heads. Maybe to get something back in there. <laughs> what am I trying to tell you? Take the day to die for their God. Even knowing or unknowing we're going to hell. 
Oh, if I do something wrong, I have 72 virgins up there. What a day. What a thought. I want to die for that. But today, here I am going. I accepted Jesus, my Savior. And I'm prepared to die for him. And I'm prepared to give up my free time. Ons is aan en aas hier. Sê vir oogend vir die op pad in houding. We are very strange people. 24-7, they worship God, their God, on the other side, 24-7. We, we serve our God on a Sunday morning between 9 and 10. The living is a bit too late. And they expect God to shock up, rock up, and assist them. I'm going to close you. I'm going to leave you with this thought. How much does God really need for me? How much have I sacrificed for Him? How many hours? You know, I was listening to Rick. How he's inviting people to come and pray. Pray. Pray life is the heartbeat of any church. Pray life. It's the heartbeat of it. Pray like it's your yearly aid to God. And even if you don't pray, just come and unify and sit in agreement. So Lord, I'm in agreement with what these guys are praying. But that moment that you put an effort in, you're meeting God halfway. Mm. I always say this, and I say this again, when I go to Cape Town, I see somebody sitting on the suitcase, I think I'll leave him right here. But when I see somebody sweating and walking on the suitcase in his hand, I'll stop. He's putting an effort in. Yeah. God wants you to put an effort in. Do something. To receive something. Don't sit there and relax and say, if you want to, you can. So Julius said, speak the word. It's always it. I know what it is like. Because I am also a man of authority. And I know you got a kingdom. A Roman soldier acknowledges who Jesus is. And I know in your kingdom this is how it operates. And Jesus turned around to the crowd and said to them, In the whole of Israel, I've never seen so much faith. Go! Your servant is healed. And the Bible goes further and says, And when he was on his way, they came out running towards him, shouting, At that precise hour, he's been healed. Sound from your mouth. Think about it. God sitting at your mouth, right next to you, waiting for you to utter the right words. It, it, sounds, it sounds so holy. I'm not mocking thee. It sounds so holy. Oh Lord Jesus, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And we want to come and pray. We want to ask you to hear. God says, No, no. Speak. Speak you. Speak you. So anybody in this house, Bernie, who still for me and I saw you, I want to speak to Jesus. If there's anybody in this house that has a sickness or an ailment or whatever need it is, I want you to say it. If you trust the word this morning, that this word is for you, God wants to do something for you. I just want you to say it. Because I'm going to speak it out. We're going to sing it out. We're going to, we're going to do it over your body this morning. We're going to speak to every person in any need and everyone. Doesn't matter what it is. Your God is able to do it. And you've got to believe not in me. But believe in God in me. You're going to believe that God says whatever is spoken over you, you will have. We're going to speak it this morning. If there's anybody that supports me, I need... I need an outbreak, I need a new touch, I need a fresh anointing. God says you got it. Before I'm going to pray that, I'm going to just pray something else. And I just want you, if this is you, just, I'm just put up your hand, if this is you. Father God, in Jesus' name, if there's anybody in this building that went on feeling, or went on seeking to believe, because we go by the natural and that's our belief. I bring us before you. Everyone stand. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Whoever is in this house says, Lord, I wait on feeling. I wait on seeing. I wait on hearing. Forgive me, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. But now, I confess with my mouth that Christ, the hope of glory, is in my mouth. My confession will become my possession. Whatever I speak will happen because God, I trust you. I am sitting with Christ in high places. I'm ruling and reigning with Christ from out of high place. The same authority that Jesus has, has been given unto me. So there's power in my mouth. There's power in my voice. There's power in my confession. Today in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm speaking Jesus over my circumstances. I'm speaking Jesus over my body. I'm speaking Jesus over every sickness and every disease that's trying to get hold of me. I don't have what the devil says I got. I have what God says I am. I've been healed by the stripes of the King of glory. I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb. My joy is complete because of Christ in me. I'm delivered. I've been set free by the power of the blood and by the power of the name and by the power of the Holy Ghost. I've got God on my side. I've got the angels on my side. I've got the Word of God on my side. I've got the Holy Ghost on my side. I'm surrounded by the enemy. The angels are camping around me. Psalm 91, they surround me. I'm standing up to take my rightful position in Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. I am a son of the Most High. I'm a daughter of the Most High. I have a new identity in Christ Jesus. I am not part of a failing world. I am part of a God who called me out of darkness and planted my feet on the king's highway in a different dimension. I am in a space around, standing in the presence of my Father. I come against every spell of bitterness, of loneliness, of wants and of needs, of pain and suffering, of a spell of rejection and condemnation. I want to tell you, you've got no hold on me. You've got nothing on me. I'm an anointed by the Holy Spirit. And the anointing will break the grip of the enemy over my mind, over my heart, over my need, over my want. Every chain will break now that holds me back my joy. I'm going to speak that name of Jesus. I'm going to shout it out from the rooftops. And I want you, my God, when to be seated, I want you to do it. Since you can even, you can shout it out, you can scream it out, you can say, Lord, here I am. Change my heart, change my thinking, change my confession. Change my personality. Let the joy of the Lord take hold of me and change my so that I can fit the criteria of the King. Halabasharabata.
response of people that knowing God that you're the only healer, the deliverer, and you are the one with all authority and power. And in Christ Jesus, you allowed us to share that power. Lord, let us be responsible for it. Give you the glory in your life. Father, thank you this morning for every sower and giver in this house. May you bless their finances. May you bless their seed. 